number 10, the queen can't wear t-shirts. It's against the rules. She can't wear t-shirts, jeans, trainers, sneakers, jeggings. It's an outrage. Why is this exactly? Well, the queen actually cannot be seen in any casual attire. Being a member of the royal family comes with a strict dress code. She must always look presentable. Usually these days she's seen in bright colors so she's easily visible in crowds. So basically, no sweatpants or jogging bottoms for Queenie Baby ever. I mean, what does she wear on a Sunday? Coming in at number 9, she must always travel with a black outfit. The queen must always have a black outfit to hand and would not travel without one. This is in case she needs to attend a funeral without notice. If somebody in the royal family dies or there's a national tragedy while she's away, she's going to need that black outfit. Speaking of travel, she can't fly on a plane with her family. This is coming into number 8. While she can fly with her husband, the queen cannot fly with Prince Charles, Prince William or her great great grandson Prince George. These are the three next heirs to the throne in the line of succession. This actually extends beyond air travel too. She's discouraged from being in the same car, boarding the same train or even more. This is in case anything should happen to them, meaning the line of succession is in danger. Coming in at number 7, she can't vote. Although this is not strictly prohibited by law, it is unconstitutional for the queen to vote. The queen is supposed to have an unbiased role in parliament and as a result of that, she can't vote and nor can she run for office. Not only is she unable to run for office and vote, the actuality is much stricter at number 6. She actually can't have any political views. The queen must not express political leanings in public ever, nor must any member of the royal family. On a few occasions, she has dropped the veil of neutrality. She was reportedly very relieved that Scotland stayed in the United Kingdom, and many suspected the Queen was sending secret messages via her outfits declaring her support for the European Union, but I personally think that's a bit of a stretch. Coming in at number 5, she is not allowed to sign autographs. Want an autograph of the Queen? Sorry, she's not allowed to give you one. Nor is she allowed to take a selfie with you. The reason for the autograph ban is in case the royal signatures are forged. The selfie thing, I guess, is just for security. So we heard earlier that the Queen can't be political, however, she has to be religious. More importantly than that at number 4, she has to be Christian. The Queen is the head of the Church of England. She represents the church and upholds its values. Up until 2011, a law forbade any royal family member marrying a Catholic. It strictly had to be Protestant only. If the future monarch of England wanted to have a different faith, it would be against the current rules. With that in mind, coming in at number 3, she cannot get divorced. As a result of her position of the head of church, she and Prince Philip can't get divorced. This is something that is discussed in the awesome TV show The Crown. Of course, it is legal for her to get divorced, but it would be very, very frowned upon. While her son, the possible future King of England, is divorced, he did not remarry until his first wife had died, which somehow kind of makes it okay in the eyes of the Church of England, although many aren't happy about it. Coming in at number 2, her husband must walk behind her. This is reportedly something Prince Philip initially struggled with. The Queen goes first, always, and her husband must follow. On on any official trip, the Queen walks in front of Prince Philip. Only when they're in private may she walk beside him. Finally, coming into number one of the top 10 rules that Queen Elizabeth has to follow, she is not allowed to play Monopoly. What? This is kind of a silly thing and a non rule, but I thought it'd be a fun way to end this list. Apparently, the Queen is not allowed to play Monopoly as it's banned in the palace. Her son, Prince Andrew, revealed this in 2008 during a visit to the Leeds Building Society in the United Kingdom. I, for one, love the thought of the Queen getting totally triggered over someone landing on the dark blues and just throwing a full on strop. Like, flip that board, honey, flip it. The tiaras come off. Off. And at number 10, the Queen is the longest reigning British monarch and the second longest reigning monarch in the world. Currently surviving. On September the 9th, 2015, Queen Elizabeth II surpassed Queen Victoria as the longest reigning Queen of the United Kingdom. In February of 2017, she will celebrate her 65th year on the throne. In that time, she has seen 13 Prime Ministers of the UK, including two females, as well as 13 Presidents of the United States and seven Popes. The current oldest surviving monarch is Rama the Ninth of Thailand, who's been on the throne for over 70 years. Over to you, Burke. Thanks. Moving on to number nine, the Queen has. 
two birthdays. No, she wasn't born on like a leap day or anything like that. This is actually a tradition in the royal family that dates all the way back to 1748 when George II was getting a bit fed up with his birthday, which was in November. Now, if anyone here has ever visited the UK in November, you'll know how spectacularly grim it can be. George created a new official birthday for himself in the summer for his annual parade, and the tradition has stuck ever since. The Queen was born on April 21st, but to avoid April showers, she also has an official birthday in June so that the weather doesn't spoil any events. And I think I'm gonna do that too. So now my official birthday is July. Yeah, the whole of it. I don't think that's fair. You already have a really good time of birthday. <laughs> <laughs> So speaking of birthdays, in at number 8, the Queen has sent around 200,000 telegrams to British citizens celebrating their 100th birthdays. Happy birthday to you from the Queen. Yep, it is true, the Queen sends you a telegram, although it's actually a card, on your 100th birthday. In 2012, the Queen sent her 175th thousand centenary telegram. Since then, she has sent an average of around 7,000 each year, meaning that by now, she must have sent around 200,000 of them. The cards are pretty spectacular and come with an incredible tassel. You also get a card on your diamond and platinum wedding anniversaries, so that's your 60th and 70th wedding anniversaries. Those two have plenty of banging tassels. Danny, how do you feel about a tassel? Uh, seven, seven out of ten. Really? Yeah, generally. I've never owned a tassel. You wait till you're a hundred and then you could have a great one. My first tassel. <laughs> Danny's first tassel. <laughs> what a day! If any of you guys want to send Danny a tassel before that so he doesn't have to wait 75 years then. Yeah, peer box down there. And moving on to number five now. The Queen has a very detailed family tree. While most of us are lucky to find out who our ancestors were even just a hundred years ago, the British royal family has had every single last member recorded for over a thousand years. In fact, the Queen has an undisputed lineage going all the way back to King Egbert, the first King of England, who died in the year 839. On their family tree, between him and her on the family tree, you can find every famous British monarch including King Henry VIII, William the Conqueror, Elizabeth I and Queen Victoria. Queen Vic, what an absolute babe. Moving on to number 4, Queen Elizabeth II has sat for over 130 portraits in her time, including a hologram portrait. What? Elizabeth sat for her first portrait when she was seven years old, back when she was a princess in 1933. Since then, she has sat for many more. Her latest portrait was finished in 2016 to mark her 90th birthday. At the turn of the century, the Queen had her first ever holographic portrait commissioned by the Jersey Heritage Trust. It was eventually created and finalised by Rob Monday in 2003. Hologram Queen, like that's so cool. Hologram Queen sounds like a Daft Punk album. Coming in at number 3, the Queen technically owns every single whale, dolphin, sturgeon and porpoise in British waters. This strange law was made back in 1324 during the reign of King Edward II and amazingly it's still valid today. If they are caught within 3 miles of the British coast, they can be claimed by the crown and are referred to as Fishes Royal, which kind of sounds like something on the McDonald's menu. I also thought that she owned all of the swans, but apparently it's only the unmarked mute swans, so honey be owning things. In at number 2, Queen Elizabeth created a new breed of dog, the Dorgie. Although she had grown up with them, the then Princess Elizabeth was given her own Corgi on her 18th birthday. The first in a long line of much loved four legged companions was named Susan, who by the way, the Queen took with her on her honeymoon. The Queen has owned over 30 corgis in her time, many of whom descended from Susan. Three of the Queen's corgis, Monty, Willow and Holly, appeared in a James Bond skit for the 2012 Olympics. When Elizabeth was a young princess, her and her sister Princess Margaret bred their dogs, a corgi and a dachshund, to create the dorgie. Adorable. A dorgie bull. Yeah. And finally now, Rebecca is going to crash my number one, yes. and we have The Queen Can Travel With No Passport. No. Yes! I'll tell you why right now. The Queen is a head of state, which means that most of her trips are diplomatic missions. Now, because of all of this, the paperwork is done long before she ever steps onto a plane. The official monarchy website says that because a British passport is issued in the name of the Queen, it's kind of unnecessary for her to possess one. I like to imagine she just strolls through an airport just pointing at her face. She's like, Queen, Queen. Let one through now. At number 10, we have the Lizard Conspiracy, Queen Elizabeth. This is one of the more tinfoil 
hat conspiracies I've heard in quite a long time. But yes, some people believe that Queen Elizabeth is indeed a lizard. Not only that, but apparently she isn't alone. She is one of many lizards along with George W. Bush, Hillary Clinton, Bob Hope, Taylor Swift and Beyonce. The whole thing came about from harebrained British conspiracist David Icke. Icke has decided that tall, blood drinking, shape shifting reptilian humanoids from the Alpha Draconis star system spawned on Earth and their remaining relatives make up the influential ruling families, including the British monarchy. It seems he has garnered a fair following and often preaches to crowds of up to 6,000 people. According to a 2013 poll, 4% of Americans believe it too, so we're not alone in our craziness. Ike continues his theory by saying the snake in the Garden of Eden was not a snake, but one of these very reptilians. Lizards! Queen Elizabeth! I like what you did there. You wrote that I did, I really did. <laughs> <laughs> Laughing at my own jokes. Do you think the Queen's a lizard? Uh, no. No? No, of course not. Of course not. Not Queen She's Liz. a beautiful, beautiful woman. She's a beautiful woman. Yeah. Coming into number eight, her family may be cursed. The Queen's mother was a descendant of the Bowes Lion family. Her pre marriage name was Elizabeth Angela Marguerite Bowes Lion, which really is all of the names. While she lived to the ripe old age of 101, her family are said to be suffering a lifelong curse. Curse. The curse is said to stem way back to the 15th century, where Alexander Lyon, the second Lord of Glamis, was said to have sold his soul to the devil. The home that he owned at the time, Glamis Castle, is still in the Bowes Lyons family. The Queen's grandfather once even said that if the secrets of the castle were known to the public, people would get down to their hands and knees and thank God it didn't belong to them. What is going on? Perhaps the curse has carried on over. The Queen Mother lost her husband. King George, who died at the age of 51, even young back in those days. The Queen is the only monarch to have seen all of her children divorce. Windsor Castle almost burnt down in 1992. Princess Diana famously died in very, very conspicuous circumstances in 1997. And the Queen lost her sister in 2002. Is it because of the curse? Speaking of Balmoral, coming in at number five, a lot of her favourite homes are haunted. Now the Queen loves Windsor Castle. It's a homelier castle than Buckingham Palace, which the royals reportedly hate. Nonetheless, Windsor Castle actually is supposed to be very, very, very haunted. It's been in the British royal family for generations. It was built by William the Conqueror in 1070, and it is reported to be haunted than none other than some of the former monarchs of England. Mad King George III is supposed to peer sadly through a window, which makes me feel a bit bad for him, even though he was mad. Charles I is said to haunt the grounds, and Queen Elizabeth, the virgin queen herself, is said to haunt the royal library. Her heels are clip clopping on the floorboards, and people are getting freaked out. But they aren't the only ghosts. Prisoners and members of the royal staff also stalk the halls. Now, now the most famous ghost in residence is none other than King Henry VIII. He is said to drag his gouty leg and groan as he moves around the cloisters. I know that he's dead, but his reputation for taking ladies' heads precedes him, and I would give him a wide berth. I'm not sure that I'd fancy chilling at Windsor Castle among the 25 reported ghosts. Buckingham Palace is also thought to be haunted by an angry monk, and Balmoral is said to be haunted by Queen Victoria's alleged lover, John Brown. The Sandringham estate also has seen poltergeist activity. Next up at number three, the Queen is on the moon. Wait, what? Did we miss something? We know that she parachuted over London for the Olympics, or did she? But surely we would have heard about her heading to the moon. What's she doing up there? What's her business with the moon? Well, apparently it happened in 1969, and it's not her physically, it's just her voice, but still, it's pretty cool. Prior to the Apollo 11 moon landing, Queen Elizabeth, along with many leaders of the world, recorded messages of goodwill that were sent to the surface of the moon and delivered by Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong, and the other one, the spaceman walking on the moon. In her message, she said, On behalf of the British people, I salute the skill and courage which have brought man to the moon. May this endeavour increase the knowledge and well-being of mankind. Well said, Queenie. Whether or not the Queen would actually go to the moon one day remains to be seen. She is in her 90s, so I imagine it would probably be a bit too much for her. Nonetheless, I'm very for the Queen on the moon. Alright, coming in at number two, she can't be prosecuted. Queen Elizabeth cannot be prosecuted because she is above
above the law. The monarch of the United Kingdom has always been above the law, which is perhaps why, historically speaking, some of the old kings and queens of old Blighty have literally gone berserk. Even if you fancy trying to jail the queen, you literally can't. In Great Britain, and internationally, it's against the law to imprison the queen. That being said, it is possible to overthrow and dethrone a monarch. Once that's happened, or should she abdicate, then she would be subject to prosecution or punishment. Basically, this would be for any crimes that she'd ever committed, even while she was in power. Mm -hmm.